Guys, you will get more hypertrophy if you do the cat noise at the top. If you don't, this movement is pointless. And if they come up and try to inquire as to what is amiss, you go Wah. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm an exercise and sports science professor at Lehman College and the creator of the RP Hypertrophy app. And I am going to be appraising Lean Beef Patty's training videos to see if her recommendations are up to muster. Lean Beef Patty, prepare yourself. All right, let's see. Can't do a push up? Lean Beef Patty can help you out. Let's see what she's saying. Okay, did a lot of push ups. Three assisted variations. One from the knees, keep torso straight slash core engaged. Good advice so far. Booty band assisted, interesting. She's using it like a slingshot that Mark Bell makes. Clever. I would say in the real world, this is just gonna probably make you pretty uncomfortable. It kind of rides up on your titties and I have titties. And also it does reduce the growth potential of this exercise because it reduces loading at the stretch and increases loading relatively at the peak contraction at the extension. So it does degrade the hypertrophic value, but it can be a tool for progression that eventually when you can do real pushups, you get even more hypertrophy out of them then. And then long resistance band assisted, it's just another way to set up your band, which makes sense, suffers a little bit from that reduced hypertrophy with the lack of as much of a stretch at the bottom, but nonetheless, pretty clever, pretty clever, will work. Higher safeties equals more assist, thinner band equals less assist, yep, makes a lot of sense. And the end, and two thumbs up, not bad. Not bad, good advice. Let's see what else she has. Dumbbell only leg workout. People are always very curious about this because some folks just have dumbbells, hopefully more than one. And it's good to know how if you have only a dumbbell, you can put together a competent leg workout and hopefully a competent leg routine that you can use a few times a week for a few months at a time to get really, really good gains. Excellent posing there as well. Let's get into it. All right, first up is heel elevated goblet squats. Three by 10, 15, and 20. So I don't know if she means first do 10, then 15, then 20, which means she's doing the heaviest load first, then going lighter and lighter. I think that's unusual advice because most people pyramid from lighter to heavier. And I also think her advice is excellent because you want to train heavier when you're the most fresh. You can always crank reps and fatigue a muscle with high reps, even if it's already tired from low reps, but you can't do effective low rep training once you're fatigued from high reps because there's just no more juice. Let's see how her technique here looks. Pretty good. If I was really pedantic, I would prefer a pause at the bottom. That'll probably accentuate the hypertrophic response, but these are actually executed very well. I will say that she's on quite a few plates and it's a little bit tough to generate a lot of force when your heels are that high in the air. I would probably prefer a bit of a wider stance, a bit less of a heel support, but I'm just being nitpicky. This is quite good. Oh yeah, and then so she's gone from a heavier dumbbell to a lighter dumbbell to just body weight and increasing reps the whole time. This is awesome, awesome stuff. And then four sets of 10 to 12 reps of, I think that is a dumbbell stiff-legged deadlift. She does have a little bit of a curious technique on it. When she is in the descent phase, in the eccentric phase, She's bending her knees quite a bit, a little bit more than I would like to see. You wanna keep the knee back almost straight, but not quite, so that the eccentric and stretch tension at the hamstring is maximized because that muscle is pre-lengthened for you. As she comes up, she straightens her knee, which is good because it exerts a lot of requisite force on the hamstring to contract concentrically. But we know from some literature that the eccentric portion of a contraction, especially the deep stretch at the bottom, is probably at least a little bit more muscle growth inducing than the concentric on the way up. So I would love to see her, this is a very good technique, but to be a perfectionist, I would love to see her start with her knees back. Another quick thing, and this is a mistake people make all the time, a little bit more of a preference than a mistake, and that is she's looking directly down into the ground and she's rounding her upper back in this exercise. What I would like to see is her arch her upper back that helps you arch the lower back and if you look up and forward, it helps you do that. 
It helps you push your hips back more naturally. It's an auto cue. And then also can help you detect if your knees are too far forward and help you push your knees back. That upright posture is not the way to lift the most weight, but the mind-muscle connection you can generate with your hamstrings and the specific technique to make sure your hamstrings are the limiting factor will occur better for most people if they arch their entire back and lift their chest up. I see a lot of people doing this look down stuff. I don't really know where they got it from, but this is not the ideal technique for this exercise. All right, that was very good. A couple pointers, but in general, not terrible. I guess if I saw her doing this at the gym, I'd be like, okay, respect. I wouldn't be like, ugh, what's that? All right, and now we have 45 degree back raises, four sets of 12 to 15. So the first thing I'll say is, if this is all in the same leg routine, you're going to experience probably an unbelievable amount of hamstring delayed onset soreness and weakness, and you won't be able to do this routine very often. I think to begin with, this is a bit much. I would do half the volume on stiff-legged deadlifts, half the volume on this, and if you recover well from that and you heal on time for your next workout, maybe half a week later, you can get back into it and then over time, if necessary, add a certain number of sets. She's definitely doing this exercise seemingly to target her glutes. We know this because people who say target the glutes want you to have a very rounded upper back and they want you to sort of look down. The reason they do this is because it tilts the pelvis in such a way that the glutes can really help it, but it doesn't pre-stretch the hamstrings a ton. I will say she's going so deep and her back is flattening out so much at the bottom that this is still a high stimulus, high stimulus, high stimulus movement for the hamstrings. So we have to factor in that volume, which is again why I think starting out with this number of sets could be a bit much for some people, but her technique on this is very good. Someone messaged her, I guess she posted this, and they said, great pick, T-H-O, and that's one hell of a pet peeve of mine because that's not how you spell though, you lazy f***ing asshole. You have a strange vibe on your Insta. Are you unhappy? I would file this comment under trying to get laid in the most pathetic way possible. I guarantee you this motherfucker has the world's driest dick, and if you're the one that sent this to her, that's you, dog. <laughs> All right, home back workout. I said home back as one word because Lean Beef Patty spelled it as one word. I don't know what home back is, but I sure hope it's a hard workout. Superman's possessive. The apostrophe before the S means that Superman owns this. Am I being needlessly pedantic? The answer is yes. Superman is a movement which trains mostly the spinal erectors and it trains them at a shortened position and most of the force is highest in the shortened position, making them not a very good movement, but an interesting warm-up and something I'm not terribly against. Australian pull-ups. Interesting, I didn't know they were called that. I always called them inverted rows. Her execution here is excellent. Test the strength of the broom handle you're using. I would also say that it would behoove you to use slightly higher chairs than she's using, so that at the bottom you can get a real deep stretch. That deep stretch is a very important part of muscle growth process and it optimizes it to a great extent. She has figured out a way to position the bar that gives her two things. One, it gives her a comfortable position to touch her body to. Another thing it does well is it's leveraged just high or low enough so that she can get a good number of repetitions. If you try to do this too high or too low, it's either awkward or you're just not strong enough to do a good number of reps, which is at least five per set. Okay, so the top hold is not a very good exercise. We know two things roughly from research that has amounted over 30 years so far in exercise and sports science. One is that isometrics probably are of the three types of muscle contractions, eccentric, concentric, and isometric, probably the least likely to produce hypertrophy, aka muscle growth. And another thing we know is that contractions at shorter muscle lengths, when your lats are closer to their peak contraction versus longer muscle lengths when they're stretched out, typically are not as hypertrophic. So you want longer muscle length contractions, typically in a dynamic sequence of concentric and eccentric, but if you're gonna emphasize one, it should be the eccentric. These are great. This is a great exercise, I think, in order to train to be able to do more pull-ups and in order to get a limited equipment situation of back hypertrophy at home. What I would like to see is her actually eliminate that few seconds of top hold at the top, as soon as she gets up to the top, start even more slowly than she's doing, coming all the way down, holding at the bottom for a little bit, re-jumping and hitting up another rep. Again, emphasis on the eccentric and on the contraction at longer muscle lengths rather than shorter. Another great tool to help you get your pull-ups though. We get a little thumbs up from Awkward Nerd Girl. 
Continuing on, she can do pull-ups by herself, which is ultra impressive. Now she's just showing off. Struggling with pull-ups, but scared of the band smacking you in the face. This is a legitimate fear. If you're a man, it can also smack you in the genitals. I suppose it can do that to a woman too, but there is another way. Okay, aha, she's gonna put the safeties up. And I assume she's gonna string the band right there. And then you step on the band. Yes. So the problem with band assisted pull-ups is that precisely when you need the help, which tends to be more at the top than at the bottom, is where the band kicks out and doesn't help you much. And precisely where you need the most tension, which is at the very deep stretch at the bottom that your lats are getting pulled apart, that's what caused the most growth. That's when the bands steal more of the force away from you. The best possible way to be able to do pull-ups when you can't is to use the assisted pull-up machine. It's a neutral force curve, just like the regular pull-up. It's the best. Your next best bet is a lat pull-down and a bunch of rows. If you do a bunch of rows and a bunch of pull-downs, you get stronger on pull-downs for a while. Eventually, doing pull-ups will be an obvious thing. This kind of band assistance, I would say, is somewhere in third or fourth place. Maybe in third place before that is a friend helping you get the concentric version of the pull-up up by pulling up on your feet, and then you come down under your own power with eccentric. As soon as you're at the bottom, they help you up again and so on and so forth. That allows them actually to help you more where you need it, less where you don't. It makes a very, very good force curve. The situation is that you don't actually have any friends and you are too socially awkward to reach out to anyone at the gym to help you. Also, you don't like people touching you, and then so you are stuck doing band assisted pull-ups, which isn't the worst thing in the world, certainly not the best. Smith Machine Leg Exercises by Lean Beef Patty. Let's take a look. Okay, the back squat. Her technique generally looks very good. The depth is very good. If you are interested in the best quad development and you're interested in keeping your lower back feeling as good as possible, it would probably be a good idea to turn completely around in the Smith Machine. You want the Smith machine, as it goes down, if you have a slanted machine, to also come out in front of you. What that's gonna allow you to do is to get your knees over your toes further, keep your heels planted, stay more upright. That bar path, which is the reverse of what she's doing, is gonna allow you to have your back not be as much of a limiting factor and have your quads really take most of the strain and get your body into a position where quad is the huge stimulus. If otherwise, her technique is good. You'll see her kind of sort of rounding out and forward at the bottom, and that, that is as a consequence of her facing the wrong way, in a sense, in the Smith machine. This is not a mortal sin, but nonetheless, there is some optimization missing here. All right, we got a split squat. Um, also done in the reverse direction, I would prefer to see it, but less of an issue with split squat. Great glute exercise. She's doing it very well. I would like to see her ideally go a little bit slower on the way down to milk that eccentric and then come up more athletically on the way up. She's doing the athletic on the way up part very well, but the slow on the way down and maybe a gentle pause at the bottom. I don't even do this myself half the time because it sucks, it hurts, but it's a good kind of pain. I suspect one of the reasons she's demoing it this way is because all of these are ass shots. And the way you get to female stardom is you show your ass a lot. And the way you get to male stardom is you show your ass a lot. God damn it, I just figured out social media. Sissy squat, brutal. This is brutal. Now, she's doing a very good job here in the sissy squat. Couple of notes for the, for the wise. One is she's wearing the knee sleeves, which will help that bar sensation. Without them, it's an interesting sensation on the back of your knee. Another thing is you have better hope that plate does not slip. Holy shit, you are going to go flying. I think based on the thinness of that bar, she could go much deeper take a pause at the bottom. I'm talking about dunk, like get those glutes real close to those ankles. That stretches the quads out like crazy, 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 and can allow you to get an unbelievable amount of muscle growth for each repetition. Slowly going down to the descent, pausing there for, gee, one or two seconds, and then coming up. That would take a very good exercise execution, which she's illustrating, and make it a great exercise execution. Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, 
frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today. Bulgarian split squat. Okay, very, very well executed. Again, looking down for some strange reason I'll never figure out uh, people do on social media. She is sitting very far back into the movement. That's excellent. This is gonna toast her glutes right off of her body. Good eccentric control. I really can't dog this movement at all. This is A plus work. All right, body weight push workout. Let's see how this goes. Okay, starting out with a pike push up. It's a fine exercise, a little bit awkward, and the range of motion at the shoulder and elbow joint is severely curtailed by the fact that your head gets in the way. I don't love this exercise, but it's okay if you're just using your body weight and the ground. Handstand push up for the advanced. Uh, yep, very good. Similar to a pike push up, except harder. Again, handstand push up if you don't have any kind of supports to push your head through, which you need to be even stronger for. It's necessarily a partial range of motion movement at the top, doesn't work ideally. And you know, that limited top range of motion is not superb, but also requires a lot of balance, a lot of setup. I'm gonna say something a little bit controversial. I think most handstand pushups are a lot more about showing off than they are about getting good high quality training. But uh, not saying she's showing off, she should. She's jacked and really strong, but uh, maybe not the ideal choice. Okay, incline pushup. Very well executed. This is a great movement for folks not quite strong enough to do regular push ups yet. The benefit of an incline push up is as you get lower, the exposure of your strength to gravity increases because you're going from more vertical to more horizontal, and thus it challenges your muscles more at longer muscle lengths during the stretch for both triceps, front delts, and chest, making this a very, very good choice for movement, especially if you can be challenged in anywhere between five and 30 reps with incline push ups. All right, decline push-ups. These are brutal. She's doing them very appropriately. See, it looks quite good. And she's controlling the eccentric pretty well. If she lifted her head up, she could get more range of motion and let her chest touch the ground. So I'd like to see her lift her head up, maybe even arch her back a little bit. Otherwise, it looks, looks very good. These are very challenging and not so comfortable because you have to make out with the ground, basically. I don't have anyone else to make out with. So I make out with the ground all the time, but it's pathetic. And I hate myself every time I do it. Push up plus. Ooh, that's cool. You do like a little, little cat back. Guys, you will get more hypertrophy if you do the cat noise at the top. If you don't, this movement is pointless. And you make sure everyone in the gym hears you. And if they come up and try to inquire as to what is amiss, you go. All right, that's it for Miss Lean Beef Patty. Overall, I think this is great stuff. Of all of the mega influencers you could have on social media, she's top tier because most of these movements are very good. They're foundational core movements, often compound, well-controlled, well-progressed, well-thought-through. There's so much crap with single leg glute, this and one arm across the body, that, little tiny pink dumbbells, Lean Beef Patty's not falling for any of that. I give overall, at least an A minus to this sort of lifting. A minus, that's my thing, because she could do A and A plus work by slowing down her eccentrics, choosing slightly more optimal exercises for that bottom end position. But overall, this is really good stuff. If you follow Lean Beef Patty, you're in for a whole lot of knowledge and awkward memes. See you guys next time.